Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm back with another exploration of creating your own speckled yarn with food coloring. Today we are going to play with the highly requested DIY sprinkles using salt. I have done this already using sugar and citric acid. Both of those worked really well, but a lot of people want to see if I can mix food coloring with salt to create a beautiful speckled yarn, and that's what we're going to do today. Now, before we get into the dyeing project, I would like to give a huge shout out and thank you to our lab partner today, Deb. Deb, thank you so much for being my lab partner, and I hope you really enjoy this project and the yarn we create. For this project, we're going to use coarse kosher salt. And I picked a coarse salt because we have bigger granules in here already uh, compared to what we might have with just regular table salt. Um, so now we need to add our food coloring. And for the food coloring, let's start with two drops of black. Um, the black is a mixture of all of the different pigments. Uh, and you can see it sort of balled up nearly immediately, but it is starting to mix through, I think, and coat the salt, which is nice. There's not enough liquid that it's dissolving the salt at all. And I think it's gonna need a lot more stirring, but let's go ahead and add one more drop. Make it three drops total. Um, I'm not paying attention to the proportions I used with sugar or citric acid because I wanted to go for what I thought would work with this salt. And we're not entirely mixed yet. Uh, you can see that there's darker and lighter patches, but we are certainly spreading out the pigment in here. And now, because of that proportion, I am going to do three drops of the blue in here and quickly start stirring it up. I will stir it more off camera and then we are also going to do three drops of crimson which is red uh, 40. Um, the blue is blue number one, the crimson is red 40 and this one isn't mixing very well. So this is a reason why we're trying it with multiple colors. It's sort of, the salt sort of just like, it seems like it wicked out that moisture and it kind of clumped. But we will do our best to get this as mixed up as we can and I'll come back when it's mixed. I'm not sure if the crimson is just more or less liquid than the black and the blue because we added the same number of drops of each of these colors into their respective bowls. Um, and this is a reason why I decided to work with multiple colors so we could see the difference. Like the blue is super pigmented and you can see that there's like a lot of blue coating all of the crystals. The black, we've got gray crystals but we also have some saturated color in there. With the crimson, there's less mixing overall. Like we've got um, some dark red areas, but a lot of more pastel. So I'm curious to see how these may or may not work. Um, but now I'm gonna let these sit aside for at least 30 minutes so they can dry out a bit. But um, they aren't looking pretty gloopy. Like I have a feeling that they will sprinkle onto yarn pretty well already. Now that we've mixed it, I actually think it might work okay, but there's a reason why salt wasn't at the top of my list. I went and bought coarse salt for today's project, and in the other videos, I tried to use the sugar or even the citric acid that people are most likely to have on hand already to make it as easy to do. And citric acid is, people are less likely to have that on hand, um, so, Pure table salt may have been a better choice as something that is easier for people to access. But the larger crystals of the coarse salt I think will work really, really well. And using a coarser sugar is also something I wanna try in the future. Now my bias against salt is just 
from trying to mix it with citric acid powder that didn't work super well. It didn't give the best speckles there. We might still get really sharp speckles, but we also might not with the larger granules of salt that might lead to larger speckles. So it's all sort of a push and pull. It all comes down to the yarn and lots of other little factors, but it's always worth trying to see how it'll turn out. And clearly I think two of these three colors looks like they'll, they'll work pretty well. Dyeing yarn with food coloring can work really, really well if you pick the right yarn. This technique will not work on cotton, other plant fibers, and it also will not work on acrylic or polyester. To dye yarn with food coloring, you need a wool or other protein fiber based yarn. Wool, alpaca, silk, even nylon, uh, those fibers will work great. So make sure you pick the right yarn for your project. And in terms of speckles, superwash wool um, absorbs colors even faster and so you're more likely to get really sharp speckles starting with a superwash yarn. The yarn we are going to use today is Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. And I just added a good splash of vinegar to some room, a little cool, but room temperature water. And we are going to pre-soak, but probably more like pre-wet the yarn in here. I am soaking two skeins of Stroll. It is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And since we're doing speckles, I don't really care if all the fibers are perfectly saturated, but we do need the acid in the yarn so that way the color can bind. Um, and of these two skeins, we will do one low immersion on the stovetop and the other we will do um, on the countertop followed with steaming. Let's start with the countertop skein first. I've just protected my work surface with a shower curtain. Since I'm gonna be kind of combining the colors all over, I don't need to wrap it up to steam set it, but I am going to try to spread out the yarn a lot for our initial add. And it's damp, maybe I should have left more liquid, but we will see what happens. Even though we're using food coloring, I still put on a glove so that way I don't stain my fingers. And you do want your glove to be dry before doing this. So, starting with our crimson, I'm picking up a pinch of color and I'm gonna come in here and, okay, this is sprinkling on really, really well. Um, and I don't have a lot of color that transferred onto my finger. I'll zoom you in on the region in a moment. Let's take up a little bit of blue. This is also feeling really dry. I feel like, yeah, and from down here you can see the blue pigment more. Um, that salt really did soak up the liquid. Uh, and then let's put some of the black over here. And we'll mix everything up in a, in a bit. But yeah, I'm impressed with how little, I'm coming in with more red little color transfer there was, but now this is gonna to need to sink into the yarn. So in all of the cases, um, we can see our crimson, we can see our black, and we can see our blue. And it's not sinking in, I guess in some places it's starting to sink in, but I might need to come in and spray everything with water because maybe I didn't leave enough liquid in here for it to dissolve really quickly. So what I'm going to do is quickly add some more of this color all over the skein, um, on, at least on this one side, so then we can let it sit for a while to see how these colors sink in and if the salt dissolves on the surface. The black and blue were really, really easy to sprinkle onto the yarn. The crimson was a little more difficult because there's patches that felt a little more wet and it didn't really go on quite as easily. But now we're just gonna have to wait and let this sit. It does seem like the smaller parts are sinking into the yarn. We just are gonna need to give it probably at least 15 minutes. Now we could go ahead and flip it from here without waiting, but the reason why I wanted to wait um, is just because I want to let the color sort of sink in where it is. But so far, this is working great. 
I am not afraid to admit, admit when I might be wrong. And maybe I was wrong for not wanting to try salt sooner. But the difference that we're seeing here might be the difference because we've got a coarser chunk. And so if I used coarser citric acid or coarser sugar, I might have enjoyed those results even more than I did with the originals there. But this seems to be working great. So uh, I think that it might just be whatever powder you can get your hands on. But I do need to explore salt in the future and see how that might affect the rate of dyeing yarn. This is my four inch deep full-size catering steam pan. It is over two burners and I like using it because I can spread out the yarn a lot. So here's that second skein of straw and I'm actually going to add, and that might be too much, this is just some water from the pre-soak, mainly because then our pH um, is similar from both of our experiments. And I actually do want to remove some of this water because if I were to speckle with this much water, the colors would spread a lot. So sometimes when I'm doing things like this, I will give exact measurements, but sometimes the exact measurements don't exactly matter. What's more important is that we have our yarn at the surface of the water so that way uh, the crystals won't hit water first they'll hit yarn first but now let's heat this up okay i am going to reduce the heat to make it less steamy because that'll make it a little easier for me to add on the color because it gets harder if your fingers get a little damp then the colors might start sticking to your fingers. So this is actually the black. Um, and yes, it does look fairly blue. Uh, and that's because the black food coloring is fairly blue. So here is the actual blue. Just speckling it on. And now as far as food coloring goes, blue is actually one of the slowest colors to strike. So in the black, we might see some purple surrounded by some blue over there. Um, I'm not sure how much acid is in here because I added just a random amount to our pre-soak. And we are seeing some color spread. There is still a lot of liquid in here. Um, and here is our crimson. Now in all of these cases, we do see some speckles, um, but they are fairly spread out. So I think, that what we will do in a moment, we'll wait a little bit and then we'll flip the yarn. I'll zoom in so we can look at this closer, but then we will uh, add more acid for when we flip the yarn to see if we can get sharper speckles, but let's zoom in. Okay, here are some of those black speckles and you can see that breaking I told you about. There's a little bit of a purple at the center and then a little bit of a blue halo around it um, and that's just because the blues strike slower. In the blue we actually see a fair amount of spread. Uh, there are definitely some light speckles of blue but I would also say that there's a bit of a wash of blue color around here. The most dramatic results are from the one that stirred up the worst and that is our crimson. And here you can really see the contrast of the speckles. Red 40 will strike faster than blue one. And so that is a big reason why we see this here. But there is still some spread because we have a fair amount of water. The best way to get sharp, sharp speckles is to have really hot yarn with very little water. So that way uh, the dye can strike but it doesn't really have a lot of space to dissolve and spread out. Um, and so with the food coloring, I find to get really, I get really sharp speckles when I do it on the countertop just because they can't spread nearly as far, um, which I think that we will see when we check on that yarn um, in a little bit. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wait about five minutes here, and then we will flip the yarn, we'll add a lot more acid, and we'll try um, to do the same thing again before adding speckles all over the colorway. As for our countertop, there are definitely colors that are sinking in, especially with these blues, but we do still have a lot of color on the surface. So, this isn't something I do a lot, but I have some of our pre-soak water in a spray bottle. So this is water that also has some vinegar. I'm 
that probably will cause a little bit of spread, but it's definitely causing some things to spread out, but hopefully that additional liquid will uh, help us move forward a little bit and give um, some of the colors that push. There's no question that we have some beautiful speckling in here. They're pretty big speckles, uh, and I don't think just because of the spray that I did, but they are speckles, and this is significantly easier than getting a little paintbrush with food coloring to sort of paint on the speckles. So, can you use salt to create speckled yarn with food coloring? No question, absolutely. Is it my favorite way? I really will probably have to do another video sometime and compare it side by side, but I encourage you to play and see what you like working with the best. All right, let's go ahead and flip this over. Um, but actually, before we flip, let's add a lot of acid because that way it'll sort of stir up when we flip it over. So let's add one, <laughs> two, three. These are our sloppy tablespoons four tablespoons of white vinegar. That is a lot, and there was already some acid in here before, but this is more than I might typically add for uh, this low level of water, which is probably at most four cups. Um, whoa! Um, there might not be a white section to explore. Okay, what I'm gonna do, we will do more with this yarn I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna use a different skein. The results of the spread here are beautiful, but the reason why I'm shifting gears and going to a third skein that originally this was gonna be our yarn mop, <laughs> or not yarn mop, but I was gonna use this third skein to use up all the leftover color, is that I want to evaluate if I can get sharp speckles uh, with these, um, with this food coloring. And do I need to remove more? I think I should remove more liquid also. Okay, I poured out some liquid. And I'm gonna come in with the powders again at an area that is unquestionably above the surface of the water um, to see what we can get. And I'm gonna start with the red this time, since this one sort of worked the best. Put the rest that I grabbed somewhere else. Okay, for our blue, put some right there. Add some more elsewhere, just to see how much it can strike. Finally, coming in with the black. And I also added some elsewhere. And all of this does seem to be spreading out a fair amount. I cannot say how this exactly compares to, again, the sugar and citric acid that I used, but it does feel, especially with the blue, because did I use, I may have used the blue or something similar in the two other cases. It does seem to be spreading out more. Um, than what I had seen before. But I'm gonna give this a little bit of time, and just so you can see I added color all over, I'm gonna give this a little bit of, a t of time and then we'll come and add lots of color to the skein. And don't worry, the first one that we did, we will revisit and add tons of color to that in a little bit. Sometimes when I'm doing two techniques, I like to sort of try to edit it together, but I'm going back and forth a lot today intentionally because I want to highlight the differences that we see. And the colors are brighter and more concentrated here on the counter, which is not surprising. There are still areas that have not sunk in, but it's been a while, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip the yarn. And I'm gonna use my tong to help. And we have our other side. And so we are moving things a bit, which can cause colors to spread out and streak, 
but the goal is to try to add color to as much of the yarn as we possibly can. But this time, I'm gonna add a little more liquid in first, so that way it is easy for the colors to go in versus adding it after the sprinkles. So I just think that I should have left a little more water in the yarn. Okay, let's get to it. At the beginning of this video, I said that I'm not afraid to admit when I'm wrong, but I don't know if I'm wrong. <laughs> I think that salt isn't quite my favorite. Um, I think that the results are work and they're pretty, but I think that the citric acid and sugar just worked a bit better. The thing that I definitely want to try though is to use coarser sugar and citric acid in the future. I did try to pay some attention inside the areas with the zip ties. We will check it, but I need to let it sit here for a while <laughs> um, to let those colors sink in. Even spraying it first, it's just going to take some time. And now let's go back to the stove. Five minutes later and these speckles over here are definitely sharper than they were that first time, but we've still got a lot of spread with the blue. We've even got some spread with the red. And so it's possible, it's possible that um, the salt is making things absorb slower, but it's also possible that since the crystals are larger, as the colors strike, it takes a little longer for that color to absorb, which gives it more chance to spread I'm not entirely sure. So it's not, so there's many different factors potentially at play here, but let's go ahead and speckle the whole thing. I think that the best way for me to compare the different types of powders would be to use one color and then have, you know, our sugar, our salt, um, and the citric acid side by side. I'm not sure if this is something that you guys are interested in actually watching um, because I, I just don't know. Um, I do have some chunky centric acid that one of you mailed me. So that is something that I can explore. But I, yeah, I guess I'm not sure how much further you all would like me to dive into this. So if you want to see more comparisons, if you want to see me play with this more, let me know in the comment section below. Because the big thing with this, and the reason why, even though these results aren't as sharp as what we've seen in the past attempts, this is incredible because it is really hard to do speckles with food coloring unless you have Kool-Aid, but even Kool-Aid has limited colors. So being able to make your own powders out of food coloring that you can use to dye yarn is really incredible. I'm not going to wait about five minutes before we flip this, but looking at this colorway now, it reminds me of what that like edible, it was something like edible glitter or shimmer or something that uh, I, I don't remember what it was from Wilton because I had red and blue in that. Uh, so this is just reminding me of that project a bit right now, which I think is really, really funny. The black is really seeming to like spread a lot and we're losing a lot of that color I think but uh, we'll wait five minutes we'll flip and we'll add more color to the other side I don't mean to seem pessimistic about this technique I think that the results are still really really beautiful I'm just comparing it to the memory that I have from a few other experiments and I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you who are watching these trials and experiments for challenging me and asking questions and encouraging me to try different things. For example, I don't think I necessarily would have come and tried this with salt if this hadn't been a question that I got many, many times. So please, I keep track of all of your suggestions and feel free to let me know what things you are curious about because it piques my curiosity. And even if I think something won't work well, I still want to try it sometimes, unless it's chocolate. I will never ever dye yarn with M&Ms. Part of me knew while I was working on this that the more dye I added, especially because once we flipped we saw how much color spread there was, the more color we add, the less likely we are to be able to really see those speckles in the end, um, since they were so soft. But I wanted to go and layer and layer color because it's a lot of fun. 
Now that I'm done with the day, we're going to need to let it, you know, sit a bit longer. I will come after I let, you know, give it about five minutes for these last few speckles to hit. I will then come add a bit more water and let it sort of and let it heat here in the pan for another 15 minutes or so uh, and then we can set it aside to wash. But we definitely have a speckled colorway and I'm very happy with it. It's just um, and this type of colorway right here with these splotches and speckles is something that is otherwise difficult to do with liquid food coloring. So I am thrilled with the results, even if I might choose a different powder going forward. Back to the counter, we still have these areas where the color is dissolved, but it's sort of beating up on the surface. So I think I need to come through and do another round of just spraying to get those to just pop in. Um, and yep, that pretty much did the trick. <laughs> the last thing I want to do here before we steam set it is lift it carefully and check for any big bald patches. And I think it's pretty okay. The thing I'm trying to be really careful about is I do not want to smear it. And in fact, you can see how big some of these speckles, speckled areas have become um, just from the way everything's happened. And I am just coming in with a little bit of black. Um, I think things are overall pretty well and it's pretty balanced. Um, and so I'm not gonna wait very long, but I do need to set up a steamer basket so we can steam set this. And so I'm gonna go do that now. Okay, and I am going to carefully pick this up, trying again not to spread it around a lot, um, place it in a steamer basket, and on the stovetop I will steam this covered for about uh, 20 minutes. Maybe I needed a lot more acid in the yarn to really get some sharp speckles. It is hard to say for sure, but now we're coming in with a goal to use up as much of the remaining dye as possible. And for this, uh, this time I am going to come in and we're still doing speckling, but we're gonna add it in heavy in sections. And we will be touching and moving this around. The goal is to leave no color behind. And the nice thing is, is that if all these colors blend together, that's gonna be something really, really beautiful. I do wanna save some for the other side. I feel like the red, we have a lot less of the red left because I think that that's the color that we were using up um, the most because of the way the pigmentation was weird. So this time, I am helping the colors go in with my hands. I don't care if it's blending or getting messed up. Um, we are just having fun. And I actually love um, this technique. This is something that I've done with leftovers only a handful of times so far, but I think is awesome. And I absolutely want to do more of it in the future. I did this, I think, with the leftover citric acid. Um, sprinkles and I did it with some leftover I think fluorescent sprinkles and it's just a lot of fun and doo -doo -doo. okay that's our red the the problem always with doing something so heavy-handed and random is it makes it harder to replicate with intention and I'm intentionally leaving some of our black and probably some blue behind so that way I can make sure we um, can check to see where we might want more pigment uh, as we're going through. But, you know, patting this, and you can see we're still getting speckles in here. It's just by patting, we're also moving those colors through in just a very different way 
from our other skeins. And so when I pick it up, I am looking for patches that might be a little more white. Um, and some white left in here is not a problem. I just, and we're gonna sprinkle it like this because my glove is wet. There we go. It's just a fun way to use up this leftover color. And once the steamer basket frees up, because I don't want um, this to alter what is happening on our other skein, but once our steamer basket frees up, then we will add this skein of yarn into the basket. Um, but it is just fun with like some blue, red, and purple. And we can even go around and soak up some of this color that has spilled. It's funny, when I speckle, I don't usually end up getting any color on the floor, but the salt, I will need to clean the floor well. There is salt uh, <laughs> everywhere. So, uh, yeah, I will uh, steam this for about 20 minutes. Uh, once the steamer basket is ready, and then we'll clean my kitchen. <laughs> As I took this speckled yarn from the countertop out of the steamer basket, I'm not seeing a lot of speckles, <laughs> and I'm seeing a lot more speckles on our low immersion. I'm not seeing a lot of speckles, but also there's still some salt <laughs> on it. Thankfully, salt dissolves really easily in water, so I know we'll have no problem washing it out, but I'm bummed that those sharp speckles that looked like we had don't seem to have really stuck around. Yeah, so here, we can see some little speckles. Here was our countertop one, which, I mean, it's just that the colors didn't strike fast. It could be that the salt slowed down the absorption. I'm really thinking, I mean, there should have been, maybe I needed more acid, but there should have been enough acid in there for those speckles to really strike. Um, and in here, we do see more speckling from our low immersion yarn. It is softer for sure, um, but, and it'll be easier to show when it's not steamy, but there are discrete little specks in there that I just don't see on our countertop one anymore. That's too bad. I'm ready to wash all three skeins of yarn, which actually look pretty nice together as a bit of a fade. Uh-oh. I see a little bit, and we're in cool water, I see a little bit of color coming out just because I think that there were some salt crystals that had not completely dissolved, but I'm not gonna worry about that a ton. Ooh, we're seeing a little bit of some blue come out. Um, I'm not, again, very worried, uh, but we will wash. I'm still amazed how few speckles we have on our low immersion yarn. So it is possible that more speckles will come out and be apparent as the yarn dries. And the colors that we got here on the skein that we used at the end of the yarn mop where we just piled the dye on is beautiful and fun. So for all we didn't get sharp speckles, uh, we got, I mean, we got some speckles in the low immersion one, but in general, we did not get a lot of sharp speckles with this technique. We do have, like there are fun techniques that you can do with this that just aren't uh, speckles. But this is my first real example of using salt with food coloring on a wool based yarn. I just added some dish soap and I'm not seeing any color come out, um, which is great. I'm just gonna rinse these out a few more times. Then I'll put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry so we can come back for some conclusions. Here is the finished dry yarn. And I will be the first to admit that today's experiment was not perfect. There are things that I could do and that I could have and should have done if I really wanted to make this the best comparison of making my own speckles out of liquid food coloring. I should have 
made more effort to really replicate the setup that I had with, say, the sugar. The citric acid is a different category because the citric acid introduces acid into the speckling that we're doing, whereas the sugar and the salt won't change the pH. But what they can change is the concentration of the total concentration of everything that dissolves in the water, and that could have a result on the rates that things absorb. So before we even go and zoom in, when I'm gonna say the salt did not work very well, I think it still is worth me doing a side-by-side -side comparison. Maybe not of sugar, salt, and citric acid, because the citric acid, I think, is its own category, and I am going to explore citric acid more in the future, but I think it's definitely worth me doing the salt versus sugar side by side with the same setups, the same colors, the same number of drops of food coloring. Looking at salt as a way to level the color, whether it's using globber salt, which you can buy from dye companies, or playing with table salt, is not something I've explored a lot, but I'm curious and I want to play with this more to see, could it be used to help you eliminate more breaking? I don't know. But now let's finally zoom in on our yarn. We definitely have some speckles left in our countertop yarn. They just are soft and blown out. This feels a lot more like I, I used pastel dye for a paintbrush. And the thing that is more striking is that this looks very different now from how it did when I first speckled the colors onto the yarn when it looked like it was working really nicely. We absolutely have more speckling in our low immersion in both the blue and the red. The black sort of, it, it's hard because the blue and the red make a purple and the black can be a little purplish. So it's a little harder to I guess separate the colors there. So this worked, but again, we're not seeing that sharpness of color that I saw in the other instances. And I don't think that it's just about having the, the colors be more dilute because when we first added the dye onto the yarn, it looked really bright and pigmented. The final yarn where we used up all the rest of the color um, shows that we did have a reasonable amount of pigmentation. It's not super saturated, I would call it more medium, but the color was present. So what happened? I will fully 100% admit that I have a bias against salt. People over and over have asked me if salt would work and, you know, I said, I don't think so. And my big bias was from when I tried speckling with dry acid dye powder. I used citric acid, I used sugar, and I used salt, and I compared the three. And the salt worked the worst. But the main issue I had with the salt from that project was that the dye didn't really coat the salt in the way it did with the sugar and citric acid. And so it was not easy to get sort of a well-distributed powder in there, and therefore I didn't like the results of the speckles very much. So that's where the bias came from. Now sugar isn't ideal. Speckling with commercial sugar sprinkles is what led me to try sugar. And honestly, sugar is something that most people can find in their kitchens. And so I wanted to create something that would be easy for people to do. And most people don't just have citric acid powder laying around in their kitchen even though it is food safe, or it can be food safe at least. Back to my bias. This was a quick and dirty video because I thought it might work. I wasn't expecting to like it, but I didn't I film a talking head saying, hey, I'm not afraid to admit when I was wrong, but maybe I wasn't wrong. And so we still need to evaluate this further. Please let me know down in the comments if you've tried speckling with salt and if your experience varied with mine. I think that even if the salt is slowing down the absorption of the color here, if I were to up the acid a lot more, then that might counteract it. So don't discount the effects of having more acid because I wanna make this very, very clear. Table salt will not change the pH of your dye bath. It will not change how acidic your conditions are. 
it'll change the total salinity, the total amount of molecules that are dissolved in your water. It will affect that, which can have effects on solubility of various things. Some things will, might be more soluble, some might be less, but it won't affect the pH. So any rate changes that we're seeing are for other reasons. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Did we create the sharpest speckles today? No, but this technique might be for you if you are really excited about the softer look that we achieved. And I still need to do a side-by-side -side comparison with the salt, sugar, and citric acid just to remove any bias that maybe I had from the technique. But before we sign off, I do want to give another huge thank you to today's lab partner, Deb. Deb, thank you so much for supporting this video. I haven't yet decided which of the three skeins I'm going to send you, but I really, really hope that you love it. If you would like to learn more about how to become a lab partner or a last minute lab partner, there are listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Occasionally they sell out, but if you have any questions about being a lab partner, feel free to reach out to me on Etsy and I'm happy to chat with you about it. While I wasn't that thrilled or impressed with the salt, the yarn is still lovely and we still created colorways that might be harder to do with liquid food coloring. So that isn't to say that there's no reason to try this with salt. It depends on the results that you want and the effects that you are going for. So if you want sharp speckles, go with citric acid or sugar, but you can still create a powder and have a lot of fun with it using salt. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, smash that bell icon, give it a thumbs up, and thank you all so, so much for watching and supporting the content. New videos always come out on Tuesday and Friday mornings, but we have a lot of other special fun events and live streams along the way, and so you don't want to miss any of it. I want to thank all of you for joining me on these journeys, even when I might start out a little more pessimistic. That's not very often, but I was a little more pessimistic today. <laughs> But I'm still happy that I tried it, and I am curious. I'm very, very curious about salt, and I want to learn and explore more. Because if anything, that's what Dye Pot Weekly is all about, exploring and trying new things. So that way we can figure out what we want to play with more in the future. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.